Welcome, my friends, to a place where we share inspiration and positivity. We extend a warm welcome to you as we discuss and analyze Lewis Mac Nice in this video. Frederick Lewis Mac Nice, 12 September 1907, 3 September 1963, was an Irish poet and playwright, and a member of the Auden Group, which also included W. H. Auden, Stephen Spender, and Cecil Day Lewis. Mac Nice's body of work was widely appreciated by the public during his lifetime, due in part to his relaxed but socially and emotionally aware style. Never as overtly or simplistically political as some of his contemporaries, he expressed a humane opposition to totalitarianism as well as an acute awareness of his roots. As we embark on the next leg of our journey, let's unpack the layers of Ireland and examine its core elements. Lewis Mac Nice, known as Freddie until his teens, when he adopted his middle name was born in Belfast, the youngest son of Rev. John Frederick and Elizabeth Margaret Lily Mac Nice. Both were originally from the west of Ireland. Mac Nice's father, an Anglican clergyman, would go on to become a bishop in the Church of Ireland and his mother Elizabeth Ntleshan, from Ballymacinry, Connemara, County Galway, had been a shawl mistress. The family moved to Carrickfergus, County Antrim, soon after Mac Nice's birth. When Mac Nice was six, his mother was admitted to a Dublin nursing home suffering from severe clinical depression and he did not see her again. She survived uterine cancer but died of tuberculosis in December 1914. Mac Nice later described the cause of his mother's death as obscure and blamed his mother's cancer on his own difficult birth. His brother William who had Down's syndrome, had been sent to live in an institution in Scotland during his mother's terminal illness. In 1917, his father remarried to Georgina Greer and Mac Nice's sister Elizabeth was sent to board at a preparatory school at Sherburn, England. Mac Nice joined her at Sherburn Preparatory School later in the year. Let's zoom in on school and understand its implications. Mac Nice was generally happy at Sherburn, which gave an education concentrating on the classics Greek and Latin and literature including the memorising of poetry. He was an enthusiastic sportsman, something which continued when he moved to Marlborough College in 1921, having won a classical scholarship. Marlborough was a less happy place, with a hierarchical and sometimes cruel social structure. But Mac Nice's interest in ancient literature and civilization deepened and expanded to include Egyptian and Norse mythology. In 1922, he was invited to join Marlborough's Secret Society of Amici, where he was a contemporary of John Benjamin and Anthony Blunt, forming a lifelong friendship with the latter. He also wrote poetry and essays for the school magazines. By the end of his time at the school, Mac Nice was sharing a study with Blunt and also sharing his aesthetic tastes, though not his sexual ones. Blunt said Mac Nice was totally, irredeemably heterosexual. In November 1925, Mac Nice was awarded a posthumous ship to Merton College, Oxford, and he left Marlborough in the summer of the following year. He left behind his birth name of Frederick, his accent and his father's faith, although he never lost a sense of his Irishness. The BBC radio premiere of Mac Nice The Dark Tower in January 1946 was preceded by the poet's 10-minute introduction in his distinctive Ulster accent. Moving ahead, let's uncover the hidden gems within Oxford and discover their significance. It was during his first year as a student at Oxford that Mac Nice first met W. H. Auden, who had gained a reputation as the university's foremost poet during the preceding year. Stephen Spender and Cecil Day Lewis were already part of Auden's circle, but Mac Nice's closest Oxford friends were John Hilton, Christopher Holm, and Graham Shepherd, who had been with him at Marlborough. Mac Nice threw himself into the aesthetic culture, publishing poetry in literary magazines The Cherwell and Sir Galahad, organising candlelit readings of Shelley and Marlowe, and visiting Paris with Hilton. Auden would become a lifelong friend who inspired Mac Nice to take up poetry seriously. In 1928 he was introduced to the classics Don John Beasley and his stepdaughter Mary Ezra. A year later he thought to soften the news that he had been arrested for drunkenness by telegraphing his father to say he was engaged to be married to Mary. 
John Matt Nice by now archdeacon of Connor and a bishop a few years later was horrified to discover his son was engaged to a Jew, while Ezra's family demanded assurances that Lewis's brother's Down's syndrome was not hereditary. Amidst this turmoil, Matt Nice published four poems in Oxford Poetry, 1929, and his first undergraduate collection, Blind Fireworks, 1929. Published by Golunch, the volume was dedicated to Jevenham Mary's full name was Jevenham Marie Thurst Babette. In 1930, the couple were married at Oxford Register Office, neither set of parents attending the ceremony. He was awarded a first-class degree in literary human eels, and had already gained an appointment as assistant lecturer in classics at the University of Birmingham. Now, we shift our focus to Birmingham, a topic that deserves our attention. The newlyweds were found lodgings in Birmingham by East. Our Dodds, a professor of Greek and Matt Nice, future literary executor, and his wife Bet. Bet was a lecturer in the Department of English. The Matt Nice lived in a former coachman's cottage in the grounds of a house in Selly Park belonging to another professor, Philip Sargent Florence. Birmingham was a very different university and city from Oxford. Matt Nice was not a natural lecturer, and he found it difficult to write poetry. He turned instead to a semi-autobiographical novel, Roundabout Way, which was published in 1932 under the name of Lewis Malone as he feared the novel by an academic would not be favorably reviewed. He felt that married life was not helping his poetry to write poems expressing doubt or melancholy, an anarchist conception of freedom or nostalgia for the open spaces and these were the things that I wanted to express, seemed disloyal to Mariette. Instead, I was disloyal to myself, wrote a novel which purported to be an idol of domestic felicity. As we predicted, the novel was not well received. The local classical association included George Augustus Auden, professor of public health and father of W. H. Auden, and by 1932 Matt Nice and Auden's Oxford acquaintance had turned into a close friendship. Oren knew many Marxists, and Blunt had also become a communist by this time, but Mac Nice, although sympathetic to the left, was always skeptical of easy answers and the armchair reformist. The strings are false written at the time of the molotov ribbentrop Pact describes his wish for a change in society and even revolution, but also his intellectual opposition to Marxism and especially the communism embraced by many of his friends. Matt Nice started to write poetry again, and in January 1933 he and Auden led the first edition of Geoffrey Grigson's magazine New Verse. Matt Nice also started sending poems to T. South. Eliot at around this time, and although Eliot did not feel that they merited Faber and Faber publishing a volume of poems, several were published in Eliot's journal The Criterion. On 15 May 1934, Lewis and Mary's son Daniel John Matt Nice was born. In September of that year, Matt Nice travelled to Dublin with Dodds, who had Republican sympathies, and met William Butler Yeats. Unsuccessful attempts at playwriting and another novel were followed in September 1935 by Poems, the first of his collections for Faber and Faber, who would remain his publishers. This helped establish Mac Nice as one of the new poets of the Urs. In November, Mary left Mac Nice and their infant son for a Russian-American graduate student called Charles Katzman who had been staying with the family. Mac Nice engaged a nurse to look after Dan, and his sister and stepmother also helped on occasion. In early 1936, Blunt and Mac Nice visited Spain, shortly after the election of the Popular Front government. Orden and Matt Nice travelled to Iceland in the summer of that year, which resulted in Letters from Iceland, a collection of poems, letters, some in verse and essays. In October, Matt Nice left Birmingham for a lecturing post in the Department of Greek at Bedford College for Women, part of the University of London. Brace yourself for a captivating discussion on London, as we explore its nuances and implications. Matt Nice was featured in two high-profile collections of modernist poetry of 1936. The Faber Book of Modern Verse, edited by young writer and critic Michael Roberts, printing Matt Nice and a cloak for Christmas, Sunday morning, Perseus, the creditor and snow towards the end of the roughly chronological book. 
In the book, Mac Nice is set in amongst others of the New Orden group, presenting a version of modernism in which Elliot is the star. Mac Nice and his group were also featured in Oxford Book of Modern Verse, edited by Yeats. This collection generally excluded American poets and was less well received critically, but instantaneously became a bestseller. Mac Nice moved into Geoffrey Grigson's former flat in Hampstead with Daniel and his nurse. His translation of Achilles' Agamemnon was published in late 1936 and produced by the group Theatre. Shortly afterwards his divorce from Mary was finalist. They continued to write frequent affectionate letters to one another, although Mary married Katzman shortly after the divorce. Mac Nice started an affair with Nancy Coldstream. Nancy was, like her husband Bill, a painter and a friend of Auden who had introduced the couple to Mac Nice while they were in Birmingham. Mac Nice and Nancy visited the Hebrides in 1937, which resulted in a book of prose and verse written by Mac Nice with illustrations by Nancy. I crossed the minch. Nancy had painted a portrait of Mac Nice. August 1937 saw the appearance of letters from Iceland which had been finished by the two authors in Mac Nice London home the previous year, and towards the end of the year a play called Out of the Picture was published and produced by the group Theatre. Music was written for the production by Benjamin Britten, as he had done previously for Agamemnon. In 1938, Faber and Faber published a second collection of poems, The Earth Compels. The Oxford University Press published modern poetry, and Nancy once again contributed illustrations to a book about London Zoo called Simply Zoo. As the year and his relationship with Nancy drew to close, he started work on Autumn Journal. By Christmas, Nancy was in love with Stephen Spender's brother Michael, whom she was later to marry, and at the end of the year Mac Nice visited Barcelona shortly before the city fell to Franco. The poem was finished by February 1939 and published in May. It is widely viewed as Mac Nice's masterpiece, recording his feelings as the Spanish Civil War raged and the United Kingdom headed towards war with Germany, as well as his personal concerns and reflections over the past decade. During the Easter holiday that year, Mac Nice made a brief lecture tour of various American universities, also meeting Mary and Charles Katzman and giving a reading with Orlin and Christopher Isherwood in New York attended by John Berryman and at which Owen met Chester Corman for the first time. Mac Nice also met the writer Eleanor Clark in New York, and arranged to spend the next academic year on sabbatical so that he could be with her. A lectureship at Cornell University was organist, and in December 1939 Mac Nice sailed for America, leaving his son in Ireland. Cornell proved a success but the relationship with Eleanor did not and Mac Nice was back in London by the end of 1940. Faber and Faber published selected poems in March 1940, which contained 20 poems drawn from poems 1935, The Earth Compels and Autumn Journal. It went through six impressions by 1945. Mac Nice worked as a freelance journalist. He had resigned from his lecturing position at Bedford College while in America and was awaiting the publication of Plant and Phantom, which was dedicated to Clark the previous year. The Quill Press had published The Last Ditch, a limited edition containing some poems that would appear in the new volume. In early 1941, Mac Nice was employed by the BBC. Now, let's shift our attention to war and after. Mac Nice's work for the BBC initially involved writing and producing radio programs intended to build support for the US, and later Russia cultural programs emphasizing links between the countries rather than outright propaganda. A critical work on W.B. Yeats on which he had been working since the poet's death in 1939 was published early in 1941, as were Plant and Phantom and Poems, an American anthology. At the end of the year, Mac Nice started a relationship with Hedley Anderson and they were married in July 1942, three months after the death of his father. Bridget Corinna Mac Nice, known by her second name like her parents, or as Bimble was born a year later. By the end of the war Mac Nice had written well over 60 scripts for the BBC and a further collection of poems, Springboard. 
the radio play Christopher Columbus, produced in 1942 and later published as a book, featured music by William Walton, conducted by Adrian Balt, and starred Laurence Olivier. He had a date loosely based on the life and death of Mac Nice friend Graham Shepard, but also semi autobiographical, was also published, as was The Dark Tower 1946, again with music by Britain. Dylan Thomas acted in some of Mac Nice plays during this period, and the two poets, both heavy drinkers, also became social companions. Mac Nice narrated and wrote poems for the 1945 film Painted Boats. In 1947, the BBC sent Matt Nice to report on Indian independence and partition, and he continued to produce plays for the corporation, including a six-part radio adaptation of Goethe's Faust in 1949. His collection of poems, Holes in the Sky, met with a less favourable reception than previous books. In 1950 he was given 18 months leave to become director of the British Institute in Athens, run by the British Council. Hattrick Lee Fermer had previously been deputy director of the Institute, and he and his future wife, the Honourable Joan Elizabeth Raynan Eismansel, became close friends of the Matt Nice. Ten Burnt Offerings, poems written in Greece, were broadcast by the BBC in 1951 and published the following year. The family returned to England in August 1951, and Dan, who had been at an English boarding school, left for America in early 1952 to stay with his mother to avoid national service. Dan would return to England in 1953, but went to live permanently with his mother after a legal battle with Mac Nice. In 1953, Mac Nice wrote Autumn's sequel a long autobiographical poem in Terza Rima, which critics compared unfavorably with Autumn Journal. The death of Dylan Thomas came partway through the writing of the poem, and Mac Nice involved himself in memorials for the poet and attempts to raise money for his family. 1953 and 1954 brought lecture and performance tours of the United States of America husband and wife would present an evening of song, monologue and poetry readings and meetings with John Berryman on the returning boat in 1953, and later in London and Eleanor Clark by now married to Robert Penn Warren. Mac Nice travelled to Egypt in 1955 and Ghana in 1956 on lengthy assignments for the BBC. Another poorly received collection of poems, Visitations, was published in 1957, and the Mac Nice bought a holiday home on the Isle of Wight from J.B. Priestley, an acquaintance since Mac Nice's arrival in London 20 years earlier. However, the marriage was starting to become strained. Mac Nice was drinking increasingly heavily, and having more or less serious affairs with other women. At this time Matt Nice became increasingly independent of spirit, spending time with other writers, including Dominic Behan with whom he regularly drank to oblivion. The two men spent a particularly drunken night in the home of Cecil Woodham Smith during a curious meeting in Ireland whilst Behan was working on assignment as a writer for Life magazine and Matt Nice on assignment with the BBC. During the trip, which allegedly lasted some weeks, neither writer managed successfully to file their copy. Mac Nice was awarded the CBE in the 1958 New Year's Honours List. A South African trip in 1959 was followed by the start of his final relationship with the actress Mary Wimbush, who had performed in his plays since the 40s. Headley asked Mac Nice to leave the family home in late 1960. In early 1961, Solstices was published, and in the middle of the year Mac Nice became a half-time employee at the BBC, leaving him six months a year to work on his own projects. By this time he was living on alcohol, and eating very little, but still writing including a commissioned work on astrology, which he viewed as hack work. In August 1963 he went caving in Yorkshire to gather sound effects for his final radio play, Persons from Porlock. Caught in a storm on the moors, he did not change out of his wet clothes until he was home in Hertfordshire. Bronchitis evolved into viral pneumonia, and he was admitted to hospital in London on 27 August, dying there on 3 September, aged 55. His ashes were buried in Caridor Churchyard in County Down, with his mother and maternal grandfather. 
His final book of poems, The Burning Perch, was published a few days after his funeral. Orton, who gave a reading at Mac Nice Memorial Service, described the poems of his last two years as among his very best. Get ready for a thought-provoking discussion as we delve into influence and its impact on our understanding. Mac nice wrote in the introduction to his autumn journal, Poetry in my opinion must be honest before anything else and I refuse to be objective or clear-cut at the cost of honesty. He has inspired many poets since his death, particularly those from Northern Ireland such as Paul Muldoon and Michael Longley. There has been a movement to reclaim him as an Irish writer rather than a satellite of Auden. Longley has edited two selections of his work, and Muldoon gives more space to Matt Nice than to any other author in his Faber Book of Contemporary Irish Poetry, which covers the period from the death of W.B. Yeats until 1986. Muldoon and Derek Mayne have both written elegies for Mac Nice, the hands coming after a pilgrimage to the poet's grave in the company of Longley and Seamus Heaney in 1965. At the time of Mac Nice's death, John Berryman described him as one of my best friends, and wrote an elegy in Dream Soul. The time has come to unravel the secrets behind archive and gain a deeper understanding. Lewis Mac Nice Archive was established at the Harry Ransom Center at the University of Texas at Austin in 1964, a year after Mac Nice's death. The collection, largely coming from Mac Nice's sister Elizabeth Nicholson, includes manuscripts of poetic and dramatic works, a large number of books, correspondence, and books from Mac Nice Library. Get ready for an enlightening exploration as we dig into poetry collections and understand its role in the broader context. Lined Fireworks 1929, mainly considered by Matt Nice to be Uvanilia and excluded from the 1949 collected poems Poems are Letters from Iceland 1937, with W. H. Auden, Poetry and Prose Earth Compels Autumn Journal Earth Last Ditch are selected poems are Aunt and Phantom are Springboard Prayer Before Birth Holes in the Sky are collected poems are Tin Burnt Offerings Autumn Sequel are Visitations are Solstice Earth Burning Perch are Stegazer are selected poems 1964, edited by W. H. Auden Collected Poems 1966, edited by East. Adult Selected Poems 1988, edited by Michael Longley, redesigned and republished by Wake Forest University Press, it Collected Poems 2007, edited by Peter McDonald. As we enter this new phase, let's analyze plays from different angles and evaluate its significance. The Agamemnon of Aeschylus 1936, translation out of the picture 1937, Christopher Columbus 1944, radio and performed, Brighton Dome 2002, he had a date 1944, radio, not published separately, The Dark Tower and other radio scripts 1947, Ghost Faust 1949, published 1951. A translation The Mad Islands and The Administrator 1964, Radio Persons from Porlock and Other Plays for Radio 1969, One for the Grave, A Modern Morality Play 1968, Selected Plays of Lewis Matt Nice, Edition Allen Heuser and Peter McDonald 1993. Mac Nice also wrote several plays which were never produced, and many for the BBC which were never published. Without wasting any more time, let's jump into the fascinating world of books fiction. Books fiction roundabout way 1932, as Lewis Malone the sixpence that rolled away 1956 for children. Now, let's shift our focus to books non-fiction and embark on an intellectual exploration of its various dimensions. Books non-fiction. I crossed the Minch 1938, Travel. Prose and Verse Modern Poetry, A Personal Essay 1938, Criticism Zoo 1938, The Poetry of W.B. Yeats 1941, The Strings Are False 1941, Published 1965, Autobiography Meet the U.S. Army 1943, Astrology 1964, Varieties of Parable 1965, Criticism Selected Prose of Lewis Mac Nice, Edition Alan Hoyser 1990. Have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover in future videos? Let me know in the comments.